Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eurokin Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Saturday, June 24th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. Today's epistle reading is from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 13, verse 11 through chapter 14, verse 4. Brethren, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk becomingly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in chambering and licentiousness, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. But as for the one who is weak in faith, receive him, but not for disputes over opinions. For one believes he may eat anything, but the weak person eats herbs. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Who are you to be the judge over the servant of a stranger? To his own master he either stands or falls, but he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 through 25, verses 57 through 68 verse 76, verse 80. Let us be attentive. Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things which have been accomplished among us, just as they were delivered to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the truth concerning the things of which you have been informed. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, it fell to him by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children." and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you, and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things come to pass, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zacharias, and they wondered at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he made signs to them and remained dumb. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. 
After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she hid herself, saying, Thus the Lord has done to me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Now the time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they would have named him Zacharias after his father. But his mother said, Not so, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet, and wrote, His name is John. And they all marveled. And immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit. And he was in the wilderness till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today in the Orthodox Church, we celebrate the Nativity of St. John the Forerunner, otherwise known as St. John the Baptist. He lived a life completely consecrated to the service of God, and in many ways, even his conception and his um, time in his mother's womb were spent in a way that was consecrated towards God. Our Lord, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, calls him the greatest man ever born of a woman. Of course, he immediately puts it into proper perspective, saying, but even the least of those angels or creations of the kingdom of heaven are far greater than he is. But nevertheless, he is seen as a great human being who is indeed the one who paves the way if you will, for our Lord's incarnation and his ministry amongst the people of Jerusalem and the surrounding areas. St. John the Forerunner is the son of Zacharias and Elizabeth. Zacharias himself, the time of the conception, was the high priest at the time, so he was responsible for offering sacrifices and incense offerings on behalf of all the people. Notice that because he is a priest and because John is the firstborn of his family, John himself should be seen as a priest. But John does not serve as a Levitical priest, but rather as one who has strong prophetic utterances. He tells them that they are a brood of vipers and that they need to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He practices a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Through his practice of baptism, our Lord himself is baptized, not for the forgiveness of sins, but in demonstration of the obedience of the Son to the Father. John recognizes his place even there. He does not want to baptize our Lord he wants instead to be baptized by our Lord. But our Lord tells him succinctly that the baptism is necessary to fulfill all righteousness, to demonstrate that the Son is perfectly obedient to the Father, just as John is perfectly obedient to Christ. So John then becomes the true trailblazer, the forerunner, the greatest man ever born of a woman. And through that, he shows us our way, 
His life was one of constant sacrifice. He didn't care about creaturely comforts. Instead, dressing up in camel's hair and eating locusts and wild honey. He consecrated his life so that the one who was to come may be glorified in all abundance. And so we remember his nativity today and we see through him the beginning of our salvation is already taking place. The great John is trailblazing the way for our Lord to enter into this realm and bring it to salvation. To God be all glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, consider giving it a like here in YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so and sharing the video with your friends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.